So this is our uh, second lecture in the advanced analysis of electrical machine. And last time we, mm, let's say, highlighted uh, the meaning of the magnetically coupled circuit and why we are interested in the uh, magnetic coupled uh, circuit. And uh, today we'll continue with the, the field energy and how to calculate the, uh, the torque or the force, which is the theory of the electromechanical uh, conversion. Now, as we said before, if we have electrical machine, it will consist of three parts. Do you remember the parts that the uh, electrical machine consists? It was electrical system, uh, coupling field, and mechanical system, correct? Yeah. So assembly, this will be lecture number two. And we state that uh, if we have a electrical machine, it should consist of three main parts. The electrical system, the coupling field, and the mechanical system. And you know that the coupling feed is acting as what? A medium in order to transfer the energy either from the electrical system to the mechan mechanical system, and this is the motor action, or from the mechanical system to the electrical system, and this is the, the generator action, let's say. So simply, here we can say that we have omega E, and this is actually the total energy supplied by the electrical system. And here we have WM, which is the total energy uh, supplied by the mechanical system. And we have uh, the field energy, let's say WF. And this one is the total energy transferred to the coupling field. So simply, we know how to calculate the electrical energy and how to calculate the mechanical energy. So how to calculate the, the field energy? So today I will start with you how to find the field energy. And for that, I will start with a simple configuration, which is the single excited system. So I'm, I'm having only one coil system. So here we start with the field energy. For single excited system. Which means that I'm having only one coil. So let's assume this is my, my coil. And I'm exciting 
uh, this coil by a voltage. Let's assume here plus minus V. So a current will flow here. I. And according to the Faraday law of induction, here I will generate uh, a voltage E. And if I'm assuming that uh, this coil is lossless, or simply, um, if I'm applying the KVL here, I can say that E is equal to E, which equal D lambda by DT, where lambda is the flux linkage. Yeah. Now, simply, if I'm not allowing the coil to do any mechanical work, so simply, if I'm assuming that no movement or no motion, which means that no mechanical uh, power is allowed. And also, I can assume that uh, R go to zero, which means that I'm assuming a lossless system. So if there is no any mechanical power and there is no losses, so this means that all the input power are stored in the magnetic field, yes or no? Correct. If I'm increasing uh, the voltage here, then E will increase. If I'm reducing the voltage here, E will reduce. Correct. So simply, this means that all the input power are stored in the magnetic field. So under those assumptions, of course, uh, this means that all the input power are stored in the magnetic field. Now, who can give me the, the input power equal to what? IPV. Yeah. So the input power is equal I V. So this will equal if V equal D lambda by DT, this will equal I D lambda by DT. So This actually will equal d omega f by dt, which is the rate of the change in the field energy. So this actually by assumption is the rate of change in the field energy. Simply what? As stated before, if there's no mechanical power, P mechanical here equal to zero. Why? Because by assumption, there's no motion, there's no displacement. So simply this means that either X is equal to zero or theta equal to zero. Yeah? So simply this means that, or let's say delta, x equal to zero and delta theta equal to zero, which means that the speed is equal to zero or the angular velocity equal to zero. And we know that uh, the mechanical power is equal to the torque multiplied by omega or the force multiplied by the velocity according to the type of motion. So if there is no uh, mechanical power and if I'm neglecting the losses, I can exclude the losses later on. So simply this means that any change in the input power 
should be translated to be the rate of the change in the field energy. Yeah, this is the logic. So if I need to calculate the field energy, which is omega f, I need to do the integration, correct? Yeah, so if I need to calculate the field energy, I need to do the integration from zero certainty I V D T. Yeah. Now let's assume that our magnetic system is a linear magnetic system. So let's assume a linear magnetic circuit. which means that the flux linkage lambda can be described as L i. So if I need to plot the relation between i lambda, it will be a linear. It will be a linear. And this is the inductance matrix. And as we said before, the linear magnetic circuit simply assume that I'm neglecting the hysteresis losses and the eddy current losses. And simply this can be done. For example, the uh, hysteresis losses can be uh, suppressed by material selection. And the eddy current uh, losses can be reduced by uh, eliminating the core. Instead of using a solid core, I can eliminate and simply use a lot of slices uh, isolated from each other in order to reduce the eddy current in the core. So this is not a restricted, let's say, uh, condition. And later on, uh, we will generalize the, uh, the calculation of the torque and the force for nonlinear magnetic circuit as well. But for this stage, let's start with a linear magnetic circuit. So let's do the integration, which is omega f equal to the integration from zero to T1, Vi dt, which will equal to the integration from zero, T1. Now, this will equal to I d lambda by dt. Yeah. And lambda is equal to what? Li. Yeah. So I can substitute. So this will equal I d by dt of lambda, which is the, here L i uh, dt. Yeah. So in order to do the integration, I will, uh, or how I can evaluate this term. By part. Integration by part. Of course, I can say that uh, this one I can cancel this one and D L D I or simply I will use the classical method, which means that I will do the integration by part. So here in order to evaluate. I will do the uh, integration by parts. So for that, let's assume that the current here, I will select it as U. And simply, I will select this one as DV. So the integration of U, U, V, DT, or let's say this is V because I'm using DT there. will equal to u v minus the integration of v du dt. Now, if we do the math, then we will have the first one is i l i minus the integration of i l d 
di by dt. D T. Now, if I look for this one, this actually is equal the integration that I'm starting with, yeah, which is the integration I D by D T L I D T. So I can collect the terms, then divide by two and I will find the, the integration. So simply, omega f will equal 1 over 2 L i square. Good. This is the, the field energy. Now, if the coil is allowed to do mechanical work, if let us assume that now. If the coil is allowed to do some mechanical work, In this case, the rate of change in the field energy equal to what? Then which equal d omega f by dt will equal to, to what? Mm. <coughs> now, if the coil is allowed to do a mechanical work, this means that the structure of the system will change. Either displacement will change or the location of the rotor will change, correct? Yeah. Which means that L in this case will be time varying and it's very important for it to be time varying in order to have uh, a rotation or a mechanical work in the machine so if this is the case then we can write d omega f by dt equal to if I differentiate, there's a two variable here. I will differentiate with respect to L and I. This will be the chain rule. So this will equal I square over 2 DL by DT plus now the second uh, variable, which is the current. Vector. Yep. This you will be the constant. Now, the assumption here is what? The coil now is allowed to do a mechanical work. Mm -hmm. Simply, this means that L will be a time varying now or will change with time. Hmm? If, L, uh, if L is constant, simply this will be what? Zero. But still, this is valid. This is a general differentiation for omega f. Omega f contains of two, let's say, variable L and I. If L is constant, then this will be what? Zero. Yeah? صحيح. If L is not constant, a function of x, for example, for a displacement, or a function of the rotor position, then I will, I will differentiate it, correct? So this is a general representation for what? The rate of the change of the field energy, yeah? Yes. So later on, we will specify if L is constant or not constant, yeah? Okay. So for that, I need a mechanical work. So I need now to complete the structure until now we have a single coil, huh? Single coil, there's nothing. So let's add to this single coil, let's say a mover, hmm? a mover. So it can be like stator and the mover. So this can be described 
a simple uh, linear machine. A simple linear machine. So let's add to the our coil. some kind of mover. Let's assume this is a, a mover here. Yeah. And in order to, to support, let's say, this uh, mover, Let's put here a spring and let's fix this one here. So simply, this is a simple uh, linear motor, or this can be represent a relay, by the way. This can be representing a, a relay uh, to remove the gravity force from here. I can replot it in different scenario like horizontal this is the coil and let's assume here i'm having a metal and here i'm having a spring and this one is fixed so this metal has a mass let's say m and this spring has a coefficient spring coefficient k and I'm energizing the coil by a voltage, plus minus. And simply, if I energize the coil by a voltage, a current will flow. Now the current will generate what? MMF, correct? The current will generate MMF. Now, from here to here, this can be seen as a gap, correct? And let's assume that if I'm injecting current from this side, then a force will be generated and the metal, this is a metal part, represent, let's say, uh, the mover. So let's assume that if I energize uh, the coil plus minus, then the MMF will generate, a flux will generate, eddy current will generate here, another flux will generate, so a force will be, uh, gener uh, let's say, affecting the, the metal, and it will move in this direction. So this is the X. So simply now the gap is reducing, correct? Yeah? The gap is reducing. Now, if I de-energize the coil, then simply the mover will return to its initial position under the effect of what? Of the spring. So this can be seen as a very simple uh, linear motion. Which can represent the relay. And this is called a uh, uh, singly excited system because I'm having only a one coil here. So this can be seen as a single excited system. Now, if I need to model this electrical machine, by the way, consists of two parts, stator and the mover. I will not say here rotor because the linear, the motion here is a linear motion. So if I need to drive a mathematical model that represents this system, I'm having two systems. The first one is the electrical part and the second one is the mechanical part. So I will start with the electrical part. In modeling, I will start with the electrical part. Now, simply, if I need to write the electrical part 
this will be the voltage will equal Ri plus d lambda by dt. If we remember, this actually ohm law. And this is the Faraday law of induction, correct? And also, I will assume a linear magnetic circuit. So if I'm assuming a linear magnetic circuit, which mean what? Lambda is equal to what in the linear magnetic circuit? Mm. LPI. LPI, yeah. LI. Okay. Now see, here L is constant or time varying. And why? Depend, depend on the displacement. Yeah, if the gap is changing, do you remember L? Do you remember when we calculate the inductance for the uh, example for the, uh, the transformer? Yeah. FX. We function of displacement. It was depend on the magnetizing path, correct? It was, for example, in I I I over R M, hmm? the magnetizing path, the number of the equivalent turns, the current inside the 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 the, the coil. R M here is changing, yeah, because if X is changing, simply this means that the magnetizing path is changing. So if the magnetizing path is changing. This means what? This means that the inductance is changing. So simply here, lambda is equal LXI. So simply this means that the inductance is a function of the displacement. Why? Because if the, the air gap changing, then the inductance will change. Yeah. So simply here, I can write that the inductance will vary. as the gap vary. Yes? So now if I plug this one here, then the voltage equation can read as Ri plus I dl by dt plus L di by dt. I'm using a chain rule, huh? so I'm saying V equal Ri plus d by dt of Lxi. Yeah, <coughs> so simply here I'm doing the, the chain rule. Now, if I need to calculate the instantaneous power, so the instantaneous input power, if I need to calculate the instantaneous input power. We know that the input power is equal I multiplied by V, correct? Yeah, so I V will equal. Let's multiply this equation by i in order to calculate what? What I need to calculate? The instantaneous input power. So simply I will multiply it by what? This equation I will multiply it by i. So I will get iv. Let's put it here. So i v will equal. The first one is what? I square R plus I square DL by DT plus I L DI by DT. Correct? Yeah. 
Now, if I'm neglecting the hysteresis losses and the eddy current losses, so simply, this represents what? And heat losses. The resistive losses, huh? Resistive. Yeah, this is a resistive losses. Of course, in the you know that if I need to represent any losses in the uh, electrical system, it must be dissipated on a resistance, huh? Yeah. If I need to represent any active actually power, uh, I can. Uh, use a resistance. This also can be seen later on in the induction machine. Uh, I'm using a resistance in order to present the, the developed power, let's say, in the system. So this actually is the resistive load. Uh, sorry, the resistive losses. Huh? What else? What about those? Now, those should be a combination of the mechanical power plus the rate of the change of the field energy. Now, do you remember before one slide? We calculate the rate of the change of the field energy for single excited system. Yeah. This is the the field energy for what? For the single excited system. And it was what? I square over 2 DL by DT plus LI DI by DT. Yeah. So if I take this one and subtract it from this part, which represents the net sum of the mechanical power, plus the rate of the change of the field energy, what I can get? What I will get? I will get the mechanical power, correct? I will get the mechanical power. Why? Because I will subtract from this part. This part is already, I don't need to carry it with me. I know it's a losses, huh? So the input power will equal the losses plus mechanical power plus the rate of the change of the feed energy. Now, now I need to separate what? I need to separate the mechanical power. So if I need to separate the mechanical power, I will subtract from this term. I will subtract from this term. I will subtract what? D omega F by DT. And if I do so, what I will get? I will get the mechanical a power. So let's do that. This will equal I square DL by DT plus IL DI by DT minus, I will take now D omega F by DT from the previous uh, slide. So I square over 2. So this will be minus I square over 2 DL by DT plus L I DI by DT. Now, if I do the math, this will equal 1 over 2 I square DL by DT. So now to this end, I'm having the mechanical power. So P mechanical equal one over two I square DL by DT. Yeah. Now let's see, L is a function of the displacement here. L is a function of this displacement, yes or no? Yeah, because if the, the mover 
is changing its position, then the gap will change. And if the gap is changing, then the inductance will vary as the gap is varied. Yeah. <laughs> so simply this means that d by dt of l of x can be written as dl by dx multiply by dx by dt. Yeah. Chain rule. Correct. So now p mechanical will equal one over two i square partial l by partial x dx by dt. Now, dx by dt is what? x bar. Which is in term of the uh, machine is the velocity. Huh? velocity. <laughs> yeah, this is the velocity, huh? the linear velocity, this one. So if this one is the linear velocity and we know that BM in the linear is equal to what? The force multiplied by the linear velocity. So simply now we have what? We have a mathematical representation for the force, the electromechanical force in the single excited system or in the relay, let's say, example. So this is actually is the, the force. Yeah. So from this example, if L is not changing with time, can I generate a force from the single excited system? No. 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 Correct. If L is constant, simply the force will be zero. Correct. Yeah. So there is no uh, force or generated or developed force. Another thing, if there is no gap, can the rotor move or can the mover do mechanical work if there is no gap? No. No. So simply this is very important for the machine. In the machine, I need two things. I need inductance and this inductance should be changing with time and I need a gap in order to to make the mover rotate or move uh, 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 freely in in the machine. Correct. Yeah, so simply here I can write a note for you. That the mechanical power. depends on the rate of change of the inductance. And simply this is one of the reasons that the inductance is important in the electrical machine. The second thing, the gap is also important. To allow the motion. Simply if there is no gap, there is no motion. Of course, we need to make the gap as small as possible because most of the EMF 
actually is um, dissipated on the gap. So without the gap, there is no motion. It becomes transformer. Huh? In the transformer, for example, uh, the solid one, uh, the, the previous example we discussed in the, uh, the first lecture, uh, there is no gap, for example. But sometimes we have a transformer uh, with the gaps, but uh, the, uh, the core is not allowed to do any mechanical uh, power. So without a gap, there is no motion. So simply those are very important for the electrical machine. I need inductance and this inductance uh, should be vary in order to generate a force. And I need also a gap, even a very small gap in order to allow motion. So until now, what we have? Until now, we have the mathematical model that represent the uh, the electrical part, and we have an expression in order to generate a force. So we need, uh, in order to finish the model, we need to write the the model of the me the mechanical part, which is the also very important. So in order to model the electrical machine, I need to write equation that describe the electrical part and the mechanical part. So the mechanical part here is very simple. Who can give it to me? Huh? Remember, I'm having the following configuration, a coil. And here I'm having a metal. Uh, this metal is moving under the effect of the excitation, either to the left or to the right. And here I'm having spring here. And let's assume this metal has a mass M. So now this is a linear motion. Who can give me the the mechanical part, mathematical uh, description. Mm. This is the mass. This is the X. Here, let's assume I'm having the, the force from the, the electromagnetic force. In the second side here, what I'm having? The restoring force from the spring, which equal Kx. So simply here, who can, this is a free body diagram, we call it. Now, this one, who can give me the mathematical uh, model that describe the motion? Dr. F is equal KVX. F is equal KX. This is the, the force due to the spring. F acid, this one. You know that the summation of the force must equal the mass multiplied by the acceleration. This is Newton's second law, correct? Yes. So, so I think, Dr., it will be F minus KX equal MA. Yeah, so the summation of the force, I'm having here two forces. And actually, I did plot the, the free body diagram. So F is supporting the motion. So F minus KX. F, yeah, which is the F S or yes. the K X must equal MA. the mass multiplied by the acceleration. And the acceleration is what? The second derivative of the displacement. Yeah. So D square X by DT square, correct? Yeah. And we already found the, the electromechanical force, which was 1 over 2 I square dl by dx. Now this equation, with the voltage equation, which I will write here, V is equal I R. Okay, let's use small or whatever it is. Plus, it was... L di by dt plus i dl by dt. This is the, the voltage equation. And 
and this is the the mechanical equation and the link in between is done by the electromechanical force good very simple to to mathematically represent a linear system huh? do you have any question until now mm. do you have any question so let's go if there is no question and discuss the rotary type system so let's discuss here uh, which means that this is the classical machine consists of stator and rotor. So let's assume that here we're having a cylindrical machine, let's say. This is the, the stator. And let's assume this is the, the rotor. So this will be the gap. So as we stated before, this is we call it the stator. And this part we call it the rotor. So if I take the, the front view, let's say, and here, let's assume I'm having a cylindrical rotor. And let's assume here I'm having a single excitation, only a coil in the stator. Let's say plus minus, and here I'm injecting a voltage and the current will flow. And let's assume this is the, the gap. Now this machine is a cylindrical rotor machine. which means that the gap is uniform, which means the gap is uniform. Whatever the rotor is rotating, whatever the rotor is rotating, simply the gap is the same there is no change uh, in the gap. This is called a cylindrical rotor. Let's discuss another type of machine, which also consists of stator. And a rotor. But now let's assume that this rotor is not cylindrical. So while the rotor is rotating, the gap is changing. This is a non cylindrical rotor, or what we call it a salient mm -hmm. power rotor. Do mm. you have a question? And in the same sense, let's assume also we have only a single coil. In the stator and I'm energizing 
this call by a voltage and current will flow. So let's assume this is the stator voltage and the stator current here. Okay. And I need to write the voltage equation. Or I need to to mathematically represent uh, this system, which is also a single excited system. Only I'm assuming that I'm having uh, a coil uh, on the stator. Who can give me the voltage equation? You know, if I need to model the system, I need to write the voltage equation. I need to write the mechanical equation, mechanical motion equation, and I need to write the electromechanical torque because here I'm having what rotation system. Huh? <clears throat> so who can help me to write the, the voltage equation here? Simply you will see this is the same. Huh? V is equal IR plus D lambda by DT, whatever the configuration is. Huh? Correct? Yes. Yes. Sir. And because I'm having a single excitation system, then omega f will equal one over two l i square. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, if I need to find the torque now, because this one is the torque, huh? If I need to find the torque, remember that the mechanical power for the single excited system is equal to 1 over 2 I square GL by DT. Yeah? So this one can be written as 1 over 2 I square partial L with respect to partial theta D theta by DT. So simply the torque here is equal to what? Yeah, this is equal the torque multiplied by omega. So the torque is equal 1 over 2 I square partial L by partial theta. And the angular velocity is equal d theta by dt, correct? Yes. Yeah. Doctor, d l على d theta بتكون different لما يكون عندي non uniform air gap. Yeah. Now let's discuss it. In the first case, if the machine has a cylindrical rotor and only I'm having a single excitation system. The gap is uniform, which means that L is constant. Huh? L is constant. Depend on the geometry only. Correct? Has no relation with what? With the angular position. So simply this means that partial L by partial theta is equal to zero. Yeah? So simply this means that for singly excited system, if the rotor is cylindrical, the machine will never rotate. Yes? What about if I'm having a salient power rotor? The gap is changing while the rotor is rotating? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you see the gap here is different from the gap here? So while the rotor is rotating, this means that I'm having L here is a function of what? Of theta, correct? Yeah. So in this case, in this case, what I'm having, I'm having a partial L by partial theta not equal to, to zero. So this is called self torque or lactance torque. So in order for the machine, to build a torque, either I should add more excitation to the stator and the rotor, or 
I need to have uh, a self reluctance torque. So maybe I can write here a note for you. It is important. To have. Inductance. Changes with respect to the rotor position. With respect to this, you can read it as with respect to rotor position. And simply. OK, I think I lost the connection. Now I restore the connection. So I will I will repeat the last thing that it's important to have inductance changes with respect to po rotor position. Uh, uh, and this is what we call it reluctance or self torque. And the reluctance torque is generated in the system when L change with respect to the rotor position. So reluctance torque is generated in the electrical machine where L changes with respect to rotor position, with respect to rotor position. So simply, this is the case if I'm having a salient rod, but if I'm having a cylindrical rotor, in this case, I must add at least one coil to the rotor. So here also we can write, if the rotor is cylindrical, then we must add at least one coil in the rotor. So let's assume that here we having stator and in this stator let the place winding. So here I'm having slots. And I'm placing here winding let assume and here i'm assuming that also i'm having rotor this rotor is cylindrical let assume this is a cylindrical rotor huh? <laughs> let's 
let's try to to make it uniform which is almost impossible but whatever you you are getting the point huh? you are getting the point and let's place also a winding in the rotor so this is called a multi excitation system this is called a multi excitation system i'm having a coil uh, on the stator and the coil on the rotor so even though the gap is uniform what will change here if you have two coils then I'm having what? Yeah. If I'm writing the inductance for the, the two coil, then you are saying that here I'm having self inductance. I'm having mutual inductance, correct? Yeah. For the first coil, let's say coil number one. And for coil number two, also, I'm having a self inductance. And I'm having mutual inductance huh? and the mutual inductance is the same. Yeah, correct. Now here, do you think that which is changing the self inductance or the mutual inductance? Mutual inductance. The mutual inductance. Why the mutual inductance is changing? Do you remember uh, the mutual inductance represent what? Or the mutual flux represent what? The mutual flux. How much flux is generated in a coil which links the other coil, correct? Yes? Yes. So, for example, if I'm having the following configuration, this is the uh, the stator coil, and this is the rotor coil. Let's assume the stator coil and the rotor coil are elegant in the same position. This will be maximum coupling, correct? Yes. All the flux generated from the first coil is linking the, the second coil, correct? If I'm discussing another position, of course, the stator is not moving while the rotor is moving. In this case, this is the minimum coupling, correct? So here I'm having the mutual coupling is a function of what? Of the rotor angle. Huh? Yeah, it's a function of the rotor angle. So now I need to write, I need to write uh, the mathematical model for a multi excitation system. This is a multi excitation system. Why? Because here I'm assuming that I'm having uh, one coil on the stator. And one coil on the rotor. So if I need to write the voltage equation, who can help me in writing the voltage equation? Hmm. The voltage equation for the stator, you will say that Vs is equal Rs Is plus D by DT of lambda S. What about the rotor? Vr is equal RR IR plus D by DT of lambda R. Yeah. So here simply I'm using S to stand for the stator circuit. And I'm using R for the rotor. 
and lambda s is the flux linkage of the stator and lambda r is the flux linkage on the rotor so simply this is the flux linkage on the stator circuit and this one is the flux linkage on the rotor so lambda s will equal to what and lambda r is equal to what I'm assuming a linear magnet circuit, correct? So lambda s will equal to what? I'm having the self inductors. And, which and s be phi s, doctor. L s plus mu phi i r. Do you remember lambda is equal to what? Lambda is equal l. L phi i. L r. Huh? So lambda yeah. s is well, the self, or let's say what we call the self in. Uh, or the, the flux linkage due to the self-inductance is equal LSIS, correct? Yeah. Plus then the mutual. The mutual. mutual multiplied by IR. IR. M, the mutual IR. coupling between the stator and the rotor, multiplied by a current in the second circuit, which is IR, correct? Yeah. What about lambda R equal to what? LR, IR, plus mu for IS. Uh, M, M, huh? this is the mutual. M, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. SR multiplied by IS, correct? Yeah? Yeah. So, simply, if I need to, to calculate the total power, the total input power, so the total input power equal to what? So I'm having two system, two circuits. Yeah? So the total input power will equal I S V S plus I R V R. Yeah. So if we do the math, if I multiply this one here, I would get what? This will equal I S square R S. plus I S D by D T of lambda S plus if I'm, I multiply this one by I R, I will get I R square R R plus I R D by D T of lambda R. Now we know that this one and this one represent what? The losses. Yeah. Yes. So this one and this one are the ohmic losses, correct? Yeah. The losses. So simply this means that the remaining part is what? So this means that this one and this one is what? The ball. Fin one. Board. And two is what? The power. Mechanical power and the rate change in power. Yeah. You know that the total input power must equal to what? The power losses. And plus the, uh, the change in field. Power. Plus the rate of the change of the field energy, correct? Yeah. Yeah, this is the total input power. Now the power loss, we know it. It's just the ohmic losses. Yeah. So simply this means that the mechanical power plus the rate of the change in the field energy will equal one plus two. Yeah, will equal IS D by DT of lambda S plus IR D by DT of lambda R. So if I need to calculate the mechanical power, what I should do, I should subtract 
if I need to calculate BM, I need to subtract from this term what? The rate of the change in the feed energy. Yes or no? Yeah. So mm -hmm. simply this means that I need to calculate how or I need to uh, to find a formula how to calculate the field energy for multi-excitation system. We know that how to do that for the single excitation system. So how we can do that for the multi-excitation system. So now let's discuss with you. And after that, I will take a break. Uh, so let's discuss here the, the field energy for the multi-excitation system or the multi-excitation system. field energy. If I have the field energy, then I can find the rate of the change in the field energy. So for that, let's assume I'm having two coil, multi-excitation can be two, three, four, five, and so on. So without loss of generality, let's assume that I'm having here a two coils excitation system. And let's assume that I'm having coil number one and coil number two. And here I'm energizing the first coil with V1, a current I1 with the flow. The same thing here, I will energize the second coil with a voltage V2, where a current I2 will flow. And as we stated before, if I need to calculate the field energy, I will assume two assumptions. The first one, no movement. Which means that no mechanical power. Which mean no. Mechanical. Uh, power. The second one, I will assume the the system is lossless because already we get tried from the losses in the first stage. We assume that all the input power are stored in the feed energy. Simply, this means that we are assuming a lossless system. Or let's say R1 equal to R2 equal to zero. So under those two conditions, we know that omega F will equal the integration of V1 I1 plus V2 I2 DT. And we need to do or to evaluate this integration. We need to evaluate this integration. OK, uh, should we take a break here? Uh, I think yes, doctor, we need a break. OK. So let's take a break, uh, 10 minutes.